Welcome to Food You. We're your hosts. I'm Christina. And I'm Gabe. Happy New Year. <laughs> it's February. I know that. But the reason I said Happy New Year is because the Chinese New Year is February 19th. Ah, that sounds fun. And this, this time it's the year of the goat. Nice. But we're not eating goat, are we? No. We're not going to eat goat, although okay. a goat is good. Um, <laughs> I was born in 1978, and that was the year of the horse. Interesting. Yep. So if you want to look up your Chinese birth year, that's kind of fun and interesting to do. It is. I'm not telling you when I was born. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So we're going to make some Chinese dishes that you can have on Chinese New Year or any time of the year. Um, we are. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> some of them will be familiar, some of them may not, uh, but we want to kind of demystify the Chinese food and help you maybe branch out from what you get at your local Chinese restaurant, although I love that food too. Yes, and some of this is kind of typical. Um, we're making a pork dumpling today with a homemade duck sauce instead of the little duck sauce that you get in a packet at a Chinese restaurant. It's really good, really easy to make. We'll show you how to do that. And we're going to make a gingered vegetable stir fry. And what else are we making? A soup, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Egg drop soup. I bet you've heard of that before. Yes. And we're going to make it homemade, and hopefully you'll find it to be just as tasty. Yes, super easy to make, too. And then we'll finish things off with a traditional Chinese dessert, and Gabe has some things to share with us about a trip that he took to China. So what do you say we get started with these dumplings? I say let's do that. All right. So we're going to begin with about a half a pound of ground pork. So kind of reminiscent of the sausage balls we made at Christmas time. That's what I feel like we're getting ready to do. But we're going to make a mixture that's going to go inside our dumplings. And for our dumplings, we're using wonton wrappers. And you can find these in a package at the grocery store. They're actually in the produce section, right next to the tofu and things like that. And you can make your own if you want. It's just flour, water, and salt. But these are already rolled out, super thin, ready to go. So why not? Yeah. Right. Um, so, would you be up for helping mix this? Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a half pound of ground pork, then we're going to take a cup of shredded cabbage, we're going to take a couple tablespoons of green onion, about half of that, and then I've got some ginger here, about a tablespoon that we've grated, and that's fresh ginger. And we'll put that in there, and then we have a little bit of sesame oil and soy sauce, and that goes in here as well. And we can mix this with hands. I'm going to use my favorite kitchen tools, my hands. <laughs> yep, so we'll mix that up, and I'll start laying out these wrappers. My hands are going to, my hands are going to taste delicious mm. after this. <laughs> it smells really good. Sesame oil, um, there's just a little bit left in this bottle, but you can find this on the Asian aisle at the grocery store or the international aisle. And it gives that like smoky sesame flavor to Asian food. It's, it's that flavor that I taste all the time in Asian food but can't necessarily place my finger on it, if that makes sense. And it's strong, so just a little dab will do ya. It is, there's only about a teaspoon in this whole recipe and then about a tablespoon of soy sauce. Mm. <laughs> And while you're mixing your dough, you can go ahead and start bringing water to a boil. We have that going on the stove. These are going to boil, and that's how we're going to cook them. That looks pretty awesome. Okay, I'm ready. Smells Whatever. good, too. Okay. So once your mixture is incorporated like that, you just take about a tablespoon of it. You want me to do it with my hands? Sure. And you put it right in the middle of the dumpling. There we go. And... Probably a little too much. That's okay. You just fold it over and pinch. And if it doesn't stay together, you can have a little bowl of water nearby and just kind of use that to help seal it up. There it goes. And that looks like the perfect amount. Um, when you're filling these, it's better to underfill than to overfill just because when you begin to boil them, the filling can start to seep out the seams. So we've got that, and I'm just going to, what I did was fold it in half, and then I'm just going to take the corners and push them up here and seal it like a little package. 
a little delicious go. package. It is. I think I put too much, so go go le with less than you think you need. Okay. Let's try it with about a teaspoon and a half, which is half of a tablespoon. So we put it in the middle, and we fold it over, and we push it down, and then bring the corners together. And it's a little dumpling package, and we'll keep doing that for these. We're just going to do a couple more, and then we'll drop them into our boiling water. So put the filling in the middle, fold it over, push the sides, and then bring the corners together. I guess we should say the filling can be whatever you want it to be. It could be just vegetables, it could be shrimp, you know, some kind of seafood. But mm -hmm. pork is a, is a good representation of what most Chinese food, or what um, the protein that's most common probably in China, I would say. Makes sense. Um, I read recently that pork was indicative of good luck. And so a lot of people eat that in China on New Year's, kind of like here, in the States, we eat collard greens and black eyed peas, or at least in the South, and they signify different things. And pork signifies prosperity in the new year. So I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you went to China a couple years ago, didn't you? Yes. Did you have dumplings? Uh, I don't remember having, I don't remember, probably. I had a lot of noodles and pork. All right, I'm gonna do one more, and our, it looks like our water is coming to a boil. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is drop these in boiling water, or not drop them, but gently put them, and they're gonna cook for four minutes each. And you want to make sure that they stay in there for four minutes so that the ground pork cooks. If you decide to do veggie filling, you could probably do two or three minutes since you're not cooking a meat. And if you're doing chicken, I would do it for five minutes just to be sure. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a couple of these down in here. And if you have good seams, they shouldn't come apart while you're boiling them. And you don't want to crowd your pot. That's also important. So I don't want to have them on top of each other. Some other filling ideas for these could be uh, some sweet filling, like a Nutella or some kind of chocolate inside mm -hmm. and you could try pan frying them or deep frying them uh, just some variation on the ways you could use the wonton wrapper that sounds really good you or can you could, go ahead <laughs> you can bake them too i love nutella so i like putting them in there um putting a little blob of nutella right here and just folding it over and baking it mm -hmm. until they're crispy it's really good if you watch our sushi episode back in the day we made some miso soup you can make these dumplings and then put them in the miso soup and eat it like that, too. Sure, that'd be good. Mm -hmm. hmm. We could probably do that with our egg drop soup today, too, if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of these, they're starting to float a little bit, so I think that's a good sign. They are. They will, I think they'll float to the top when they're, getting, when they're close. getting done, but you want to make sure to set that timer and keep them in for four minutes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to wait this out, and we're going to put some more in, and we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll show you how to make the homemade duck sauce to go with them. Your extraordinary future begins at Wingate University with more than 35 undergraduate majors and graduate and professional programs in the health sciences, business, and education. Wingate University's enrollment has mushroomed and construction has skyrocketed in the past two decades. And Wingate is the sixth best value in the South, according to U.S. News & World Report. Most importantly, Wingate graduates get jobs that are working all over the Carolinas and the U.S. Major in a great life at Wingate University. second batch of dumplings boiling away here. The first ones are over there chilling out and we're gonna make some duck sauce here in a minute but mm -hmm. first. As always we want to remind you to check us out on YouTube at the Wingate University channel and on social media at the Facebook. Yes, Wingate Food U. And as always we want to thank the Union County Agricultural Center and letting up for them letting us use the demonstration kitchen 
uh, the Union County Cooperative Extension. We appreciate that. Thank you very much, Sally. Yes, this kitchen's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, so duck sauce, super easy. All you need is a jar of apricot preserves or orange marmalade. Either one works. And I didn't know this till recently. I don't know what I thought duck sauce was, but I'm excited to find out it was this. And so you take about a cup of the apricot preserves or the marmalade and a couple tablespoons of water, a tablespoon of soy sauce, and then just a dash of that sesame oil again. Not a lot. Nope, about a half teaspoon. Like I wouldn't even, yeah, like that's good. Okay, that's a half teaspoon. Eyeball it. Okay, and then I think I'm actually gonna use a fork for this. You wanna do it? I'll whip it. Yeah, we're just gonna mix it up really well. Uh, you can use a blender if you want to, or a stick blender, or you can just beat it really well just, with. Pork. I'm just doing it slowly so it doesn't splatter out on my designer shirt. All right. You know what? Mm, this is all there is to it. What? You know what I gotta do? What? Smell it. <laughs> hmm. How does it smell? That smells pretty good. I hope so. I, that sesame oil overpowers it. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know about that. You might that. not like it in yours. I don't know. I like it in mine. It's just so strong. I mean, it's good. It's just strong. Okay. Like so me. a little bit goes a long way. Mm -hmm. All right, so while he's mixing whipping that it, up, I'm whipping whipping it good. It up, I'm going to check our little dumplings. And it's been about four minutes, and they're floating to the top. There we go. I'm going to well, grab our plate and pull I, these can out. Can I tell them about what happened? Yeah. So an example of, of not having your dumplings tight enough, we had some of the pork balls that somehow escaped from the dumpling jacket. This one. So just, again, make sure you got your dumplings tight. <laughs> yes. That's just good advice in general. <laughs> Seal them up properly. All right, hmm. so I like to use a slotted spoon when I'm taking these out and just set them on a plate. Those dumplings look soft, like the wonton wrappers got soft. They are. It's, it's like a noodle. It is. It's just like a pasta. Um, they're made out of flour, water, and salt, just like pasta. There we go. Um, you may have heard of pot stickers. This is very similar to that. If you took these and then sauteed them in a pan, they would get kind of hard and crispy on the bottom, and you would deglaze the pan with some chicken stock or cooking wine, and you would have pot stickers. So super easy. You could make these ahead of time, and you could freeze them, like already pinched together, and then you could boil them or put them in the pan when you're ready to cook them. So it's a good make-ahead dish, too. And I think everybody likes these for parties or extra, extra something at dinner. Mm -hmm. Supper on Tuesday. There you go. All right. And for extra rich filling, um, if you were putting chicken inside this, you could also boil it in chicken stock, and that would help give your wrapper some extra richness. So we have our dumplings. I'm going to get rid of this pan. We're going to take another really quick break, and when we come back, we will show you how to make gingered Asian stir fry. What is Wingate? A thriving university nestled in a quiet community near Charlotte. Named sixth best value in the South by U.S. News & World Report. Leading the way in the health sciences with pharmacy, PA studies, and nursing. What is Wingate? Big enough to offer 22 NCAA sports. Small enough to attract the best and brightest in the world. What is Wingate? Wingate is you. Wingate University, major in a great life. at the Union County Agricultural Center and we are going to make some gingered Asian stir fry. Happy Chinese New Year again. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> yes. So in this stir fry we've picked vegetables that we like um, that are popular in Asian stir fries and I'm cutting some onion here and Gabe's got some yellow squash. Zucchini. <laughs> we got snow peas. Snow peas. And sprouts. Yes. Bean sprouts are very popular in Chinese stir fries and they add a nice crunch at the end. So 
tell you what, while you're cutting that, I'm going to go ahead and add two tablespoons of canola oil to a pan. The secret of a good stir fry is a very hot pan when you put the vegetables in. If your pan isn't warm enough and the oil isn't hot enough, then you're going to end up with limp vegetables, almost mm. like they steam themselves in mm. the pan. Can't have no limp vegetables. <laughs> I mean, that's fine, but that's not what we're going for I here. I don't think it's fine. I'm being serious. <laughs> we don't need any limp vegetables. <laughs> we're going for crisp. No limp, soggy vegetables. <laughs> we're going for crisp, fresh vegetables. So we're going to give this like a minute to a minute and a half. It's different for every stove. This is gas heat, so it's going to heat up a little bit quicker. Mm. If you have a traditional stove top, you might give it two or three minutes. We're cooking so. with gas. <laughs> yes. So we're going to give this just a minute while we're chopping this up. Gabe's got the squash looking awesome. Thank and you. And I'm going to finish this onion right here. You know, I recently learned the trick to not crying while you chop onions. Don't, don't uh, read any bad news. <laughs> Very funny. Um, <laughs> this middle part of the onion that kind of clumps together, mm -hmm. if you cut around it on either side, it won't get pungent and you won't cry. That's similar to the mango that we'll cut later because it has the core in the middle. It does, only it doesn't make you cry. Mm -hmm. it makes me so. happy to eat mango. <laughs> All right, I got my onion, you're working on that. Mm. And sometimes I just like to drop one piece in. That's not hot enough. Nope, it's not even sizzling. So <laughs> we're just gonna wait a couple of minutes longer, let it get hotter. Gabe's cutting the squash into sticks, which is nice if you're eating with chopsticks. It's easier to pick up. All right, I think I just saw something jump, the oil. Yeah. There we go, we got pops. I'm going to go ahead and add the onions. You can hear the sizzle. And I'm going to reach around you and start adding this. Don't chop my fingers. I love cooking with bright vegetables. Had our zucchini. And then while Gabe finishes chopping that and add that, I'm going to make our little ginger stir fry sauce. So we're just going to let that sit in the hot heat and grab my bowl. What you want to do is add a tablespoon of ginger that we've grated up. You think I'm going to just throw these snow peas in? Yes. Yeah. Pop the snow peas right in. I mean, wash them first, but <laughs> you don't have to cut off the ends, the tails or anything. Happy New Year. They look like flat sugar snap peas or flat beans. So two tablespoons of ginger, another teaspoon of that sesame oil. I think we're going to finish it off here. Almost. A little, little bit. Um, three tablespoons of soy sauce. What about sprouts? They go in very last. Okay. So one, two, three, three tablespoons of soy sauce. Mm. And then I have three tablespoons here of cooking wine, and I've chosen just like the shelf wine. You can use real wine if you want to. And if you don't want to use wine, you can just use chicken stock and that'll work as well. You know, I love my local Chinese restaurant. Yeah. But the dishes that we're making, I have to believe, will be less, um, will have less sodium and like juice and all kind of whatnot in it. It's just what you see here and probably a little better for you. Yeah. I think that's pretty true about Any eating out food. versus eating in. Yeah. So anytime you can make it yourself. True that. <laughs> With fresh vegetables, it's really good. Say. Yep. All right, so we're just going to stir fry this for a couple minutes, probably four to five minutes. You can hear it cooking, and our gas is on almost completely high. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to let that do its thing for a minute. Mm -hmm. And then we'll add the sauce in a second. Do you know any Chinese words? I don't think so. I feel like I should. Oh, she she. What's thank that mean? Thank you. Say it again. She she. Do you? I know that one, and I know. I think I know hello, which is ni hao. Yep. 
So there you go. <laughs> you can impress all your friends with <laughs> your Chinese. <laughs> funny. Do you have a favorite Chinese dish? Oh, favorite Chinese dish. I like, if, if we're talking at my local Chinese restaurant, bean curd Szechuan style. So this is tofu spicy, that basically, good. with some vegetables. Don't fear the tofu. The tofu is <laughs> good. It really is. It's better fried. What isn't? <laughs> what isn't? Okay. All right. Now that those have Let's been cooking. Let's put some juice on it. We're going to add our stir fry sauce to it. We're just going to pour this over it. Mmm. Mmm. And that fresh ginger, you can see it on the vegetables, is what makes it the gingered stir fry. Mm. <laughs> it smells really good, doesn't it? Mm. And you get hints of the vegetable, not the vegetable oil, the sesame oil in there. It's very fragrant, and it's really good. So You notice we didn't add any salt to this, and that's because we have soy sauce in here, and that's already really high in sodium. So we're getting that saltiness from the soy sauce. All right, and the key is to keep this on high heat the whole time so that it's moving and it's not steaming itself. And if you have a wok, that's great. Um, we chose a shallow pan because that's what we have. And you just want to avoid keeping a pan with high walls because that holds in the steam and it makes your vegetables steam instead of get crispy. I would say those are probably good to go. Yep, I think so too. We're just going to wait a little bit until the sauce bubbles off, which should just take a second. So we're going to finish this out. Um, just a reminder, you can find these recipes on Wingate Food U's Facebook page under Wingate Food U. And a big thanks to the Ag Center. And we will be right back with our next dish, Egg Drop Soup. Happy New Year. Planning your next step in life? Come complete your education in a dynamic, caring environment at Wingate University. Enrollment and construction have skyrocketed in the past two decades as students pursue challenging and rewarding degrees in fields like the health sciences, business, and education. U.S. News & World Report has named Wingate University the sixth best value in the South. Visit one of our three great campuses, Wingate, North Carolina, Hendersonville, or Charlotte, or check us out at wingate.edu. Major in a great life at Wingate University. Happy New Year, Chinese New Year, <laughs> February 19th. Yes. And that's why we're making Chinese food. It's the year of the goat. Yes. <laughs> Did you, do you remember Saturday Night Live and the goat boy? I wasn't allowed to watch that growing up, so unless it was recently, no. Mm, it wasn't recently. <laughs> eh, look it up, goat boy on Saturday Night Live. You okay. can probably find him on YouTube. Just that's a disclaimer, irrelevant. I don't know if it's clean. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> Okay. Either. So we're back and we're going to make... Egg drop soup. I bet you've had that, <laughs> and hopefully this will be good. Okay, it is literally what it says. It's egg the dropped in soup. soup. <laughs> so we'll teach you how Drop to do that. Drop the egg in the soup. Yep. What am I doing here? Chicken broth. Yes, so we're gonna bring two cups of chicken broth one. to a boil. Wait, was that two cups? That was one cup. Kay. So you need one more. Yes. Um, and this makes four half cup servings, so you can easily Dang. alter this to two people or four people, whatever you want to do. And while that's coming to a boil, I'm going to whisk up a couple eggs here. That should boil pretty quick. Why are you saying? Because it's only two cups. So if we stare at it, it might take longer. All right. All right, so the secret to this is to make sure your eggs are super whisked, very well incorporated. You can use a blender if you want to, or just a whisk. And to our chicken broth, we're going to add just a little bit mm. <laughs> of our infamous sesame oil. And I mean like a quarter teaspoon, well, tiny I'm gonna bit. Well, uh, yeah, I'm going to do, eyeball it. As soon as it comes out, I'm going to stop it. Mmm. <laughs> See, I think that's enough. A little bit more. <laughs> sesame oil. Hey. Just one more like that. Are you kidding me? 
Yep. And that's about a quarter of a teaspoon. So we've got that. Um, not that. Just a little bit of our cooking wine again. And again, if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. It just adds a little bit of flavor. Here we go. And as soon as that comes to a boil, we'll start dropping our eggs in. Okay. <laughs> Did you have any soup when you were in China, Gabe? Yes, when I had the privilege of going to China, I remember one soup in particular. It was like um, poultry and noodle soup. And I realized what the meat was when I saw the duck's head in the soup. Um, so no wasting, the whole animal was in there. Or maybe the head was in there so you knew what kind of meat it was. Anyway, it was good. Um, had a lot of pork belly, yeah. which is like bacon supreme, very rich. That's a popular thing here in America right now, I think. Mm -hmm. Fried pork belly, pork fat. A lot of whole fish served to the table, steamed fish. Mm, a lot of uh, greens. So a typical meal would be, they would bring out the the rich food first. So the protein, the pork belly, the fish. So whereas here, you bring out bread or salad for like fillers kind of first. Mm -hmm. But over there it was the good stuff first and then Towards the end, you would have like bok choy or some other kind of greens, and then the end of the meal would usually be fruit. Which is what we're doing today. Yeah. And so they're frothy. <laughs> they are. Looks like eggnog. <laughs> uh, what you want to do is pour them very, very slowly. Oh, that's too fast. Ooh, I see what's happening. Yeah, you want to stir it while I pour. Does our angle no? have that? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. There you go. It looks starting to look like egg drop soup. It does. So if you ever, the eggs. if you've ever seen egg drop soup, it literally looks like little ribbons of eggs down inside of it. Yeah, this looks a lot like that. Mm-hmm. Means we're doing it right. Yeah. Move your ball this way a little bit because you're getting to the edge. Um, a lot of restaurants will add yellow food coloring to it. Boo. I know. So this may look a little bit different than what you would pick up at takeout, but it just it's looks authentic, more clear. We promise. This is something else. This is like <laughs> a sign. It's like um, Mr. Wizard for our older viewers. So cool. All right. We're almost there. Keep stirring. I am. And you want to keep it moving the whole time. And you can do this with the help of someone, or you can do it. I'm doing a figure eight. That's perfect. All right. And that's it. For those of you who don't know, Christina is a relatively competitive ice skater. And when I said figure eight, it reminded me of that. <laughs> Used to be. Mm, mm. All right, so that's it. That's our egg drop soup. It smells good. It does. You, you're so surprised. Yeah. <laughs> it's magic. It's cool. We haven't made this before, so we're really excited about it. Okay, we'll dish that up in a little bit, but how about we go ahead and sprinkle our scallions in there? So mm. just green onions cut real finely, and that's so the fine. garnishment for it, and that is all egg drop soup is. So we are going to dish these things up mm. and come back and talk about our just simple fruit dessert. Mm and we'll be done. So we'll see you in a few minutes. What is Wingate? A thriving university nestled in a quiet community near Charlotte. Named sixth best value in the South by US News & World Report. Leading the way in the health sciences with pharmacy, PA studies, and nursing. What is Wingate? Big enough to offer 22 NCAA sports. Small enough to attract the best and brightest in the world. What is Wingate? Wingate is you. Wingate University, major in a great life. And we're back. Good to see you again. Happy New Year. Chinese New Year. Yes, we've got our dumplings and stir fry plated up and our egg drop soup in a clear bowl so you can see the eggs floating yep. in there. We're going to put some of our homemade duck sauce on our dumplings a little bit later. Yes. Right now we're making dessert, and we're not making pie or uh, donuts. Nope. We're making fruit. We're not yep. making fruit. We're cutting fruit yep. as a refreshing end to our meal. So and right, that's it. And that's it. Right here I have honeydew, melon. Yep, and I have a mango and some kiwi. And the honeydews are a popular melon in China. 
Mm -hmm. I think you mentioned you have melon a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we have dragon fruit, which is kind of like, kind of like kiwi fruit uh, with the seeds, and but it's got a white flesh and the black seeds and a pink rind, I believe it was, but it, it was tasty. Hmm. Sounds good. So I'm gonna start scooping out the middle of this like a cantaloupe. All right. Yep, they're very similar. Um, cantaloupes, honeydew melons. Uh, I forget what they're called in China. They have their own name, but. Melons came to China in the 1940s, and they have loved them ever since, and they really? are very popular. Yeah, they're not I, indigenous, but they're very popular there. I didn't realize that. Yep, I forget. Um, it was a vice president from the U.S. that took a melon seed over with him when he went to visit, and that's how it got started. How about that? Pretty cool, huh? I think that's cool. <laughs> I'm just going to put my mango slices on here. Cut nice big strips. I love mangoes. They say, they say, they smell so sweet and they're so good. Mm -hmm. And they're full of vitamin C, which is great. And what a better healthy dessert than to cleanse your palate with some fresh fruit. All right. One more. I'm glad you're wearing a red sweater because that's good luck in China. I know. I did that on purpose. <laughs> it is red and gold are their big colors over there, right? Think so, yeah. Just like the mango. All right, and then this kiwi. Mm. I'm just gonna run my knife around it and peel it real quick. You cannot eat the skin of a kiwi. I suppose you could, but. Yeah, it, you won't enjoy it. No. <laughs> it's furry and pretty fibrous. <laughs> mm, like me. I don't, I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's funny. And we're just <laughs> going to cut it in some big, big discs here. Put that on our plate. Mm -hmm. Just careful. a little bit more. I will be careful. I promise. You could use a peeler for this if you wanted to. But sometimes I just prefer to use a paring knife. My honeydew slices aren't very elegant, but I guess my thought was you can grab it and eat it. You can. And hold on to it. And you could cut them into smaller like wedges like this mm -hmm. to pick up if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Perfectly fine. Um, all right, so we've got our melon. We've got that. We'll get the duck sauce. We'll grab some duck sauce. Cut up a little more melon. And again, that duck sauce was super easy to make. I think you'll really like it if you give it a try. You could use it for egg rolls and anything else you like to dip that's Chinese. And so once again, you can find all these recipes online on our Facebook page under Wingate Food U. And we also encourage you to check this episode out and a bunch of others on Wingate University's YouTube channel. And we want to say a special thanks to the Union County Agricultural Center and the Cooperative Extension for letting us use the demonstration kitchen. Thank you, Sally. Yes, and we hope you'll check us out again next time. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year.